Let's now take a look at the common bass amplifier configuration. You'll notice then that the bass has been grounded, that the signal is applied to the emitter, and we're representing the signal again with a, as a V signal plus or in series with its source resistance. Because the signal is connected to the emitter, we're going to once again use the T model, and here again we see the source through the source resistance connected to the emitter, which the T model then has modeled here with R sub E. So let's just go ahead and get started on this. We have then, just from observation, R in is the resistance that we see looking into, in this case, the emitter going to ground. R in is just R sub E. And as we know from some of our examples, R sub E is a relatively small value. And um, we're going to see later on that that R sub E leads to some fairly severe attenuation of the signal at the input, which, which minimizes the usefulness of this amplifier as a voltage gain amplifier. So R in is relatively small. R out, also again just from observation, we can see that the resistance looking back into here is just R sub C. And R sub C as we're going to see, is proportional to, or that the gain of this amplifier is proportional to R sub C. So to get much gain, we'd like R sub C to be large, but we'd also like R out to be small. So there's a, a trade-off there. Um, really, this amplifier has just the opposite input-output uh, resistance characteristics to what we'd like. It's got a small input resistance and a relatively large output resistance. Now let's calculate the open circuit current gain. As we've done in the past, V out is simply equal to uh, negative alpha I sub E times R sub C. And we can see here the input I sub E is equal to, notice the reference direction, so I sub E is going to equal to be equal to negative V in over R sub E. So substituting this in here, we get the V out is equal to negative times the negative is a positive. Alpha times V in over, uh, that's a lowercase, R sub E times R sub C. So A V zero then is equal to alpha R sub C over R sub E. Now, as you remember, G sub M is equal to alpha over R sub E. So replacing alpha over R sub E with that, we get that the open circuit gain is equal to G sub M times R sub C. And other, for, other than the fact that this is non-inverting, um, this is the same open circuit voltage gain that we saw with the common emitter. So at least at this point, the open circuit gain is still quite respectable. We'll go on and we'll calculate the other gains, and again, we're going to see that the overall gain um, is severely diminished because of the input resistance, the small input resistance. So, A sub V, which is V out over V in with R sub L connected, R sub L then connected here gives us then, basically it's the same gain term, only now we have R sub L in parallel with R sub C, and we get then that A sub V is equal to G sub M times R sub C in parallel with R sub L. Now we can calculate the overall voltage gain by saying that G sub V is equal to A sub V times the uh, voltage division term here at the input, or a sub V, which is V out over V in, G sub V then is A sub V, which is V out over V in, times V in over V sig, where we have then that V in is equal to V sig times R sub E over R sub E plus R sig. So then G sub V is equal to A sub V was G sub M R sub C parallel R sub L 
times this r sub e over r sub e plus r sig. We can simplify this a little bit by recognizing that alpha is equal to g sub m times r sub e. So we have g sub m r sub e here. We can then replace that with an alpha, and we get alpha times r sub c parallel r sub l divided by r sub e plus r sig. And it's interesting to note that since alpha is typically pretty close to 1, the overall voltage gain, g sub v, is equal to the ratio of the output resistance, r parallel, uh, or the total resistance at the output, r sub l parallel to r sub c, and the total resistance at the input, r sub sig, r sig plus r sub e. We see in general then that the gain, the overall transmission gain of this amplifier, given that alpha again is pretty close to 1, isn't dependent upon beta really at all, but rather dependent upon the resistances, the R sub C in parallel with R sub L, and the dominating term R sig. So we can see that, at least in general, this has some limitations on the gain. If the signal resistance is very large, or the load resistance is relatively small, we've got uh, minimal gain here. Let's make a couple of other observations. Um, as we've already said, the con this configuration is somewhat limited as a uh, voltage amplifier. But it turns out that there are some specialized applications, such as when R sig is relatively small and you're trying to match the uh, amplifier itself with a small impedance resistance here. And then it turns out, and this is beyond the scope of this class, but it turns out that this has a really quite good high frequency um, response and finds applications because of its good uh, frequency characteristic.